Hello and welcome to this tutorial on implementing a dynamic data table sorting, filtering, and pagination using the Primary Act data table component. In this tutorial, we will learn how to use the popular UI library Primary Act to create dynamic table, uh, dynamic data table that can be used to display, sort, filter, and paginate our data. First, um, the first thing you're going to have to do is start a React app. You can use Create React app or any other method that you'd like to use, and I've already gone ahead and done this. The other thing that I've done is I've added some styling to this app here so that we have some padding and I've deleted the rest of the app around it. I've also converted app.js to app.jsx so that I can use the JSX uh, syntax. Let's start off by installing primary act. So you can either use yarn add or npm install. So I'm going to do yarn add prime react just like that. Great, so now that it's installed, we can go ahead and import it um, at the top of our component. In this case, it's the app file. So I'm going to go ahead and import data table from components, not components, whoops, from primary act slash data table. I'm also going to import column, just as GitHub Copilot has done here, from primary act slash column. There's one other thing that you need to I need to note here is you need to at some point um, somewhere in your application whether that's in the index um, the app .jsx or where, wherever your component is living you're going to have to import the CSS for Primary Act so I've gone ahead and copied those import statements over to a document here so let me grab them and I'm going to leave the documentation to to getting started with Primary Act in the description below um, so that you can find these uh, this tutorial um, on how to install and uh, import their styles and components there as well. So now that I've gone ahead and imported the styles here, I'm going to get rid of this React app heading and change it to a data table. And I'm going to leave the value blank for now. And it's inside this data table, you're going to set up columns. Um, actually, let's set up the data first. So I also have a copied data set um, that I'm just going to set into a variable. It's going to be an array of objects, and each object is going to have an ID, name, age, and city, obviously representing a person. Um, so I'm actually going to feed that through to the value property in the data table. And then inside of the, the data table, we're going to go ahead and set the columns. So with a column, you're going to set field equal to the field in the actual object um, that contains the value you want to be displayed there. So in this case, that's going to be ID. So the field is going to be ID, and then the header is going to be how you want that, that um, field name displayed up in the header of the table. So that case, in this case, it's going to be capital ID. And, whoops, I don't know what happened there, capital ID and go ahead and close out that column. And I'm going to go ahead and repeat this for the rest of the columns. Great. Um, now if I go ahead and start the app, uh, let's see, start, you should go see a basic table set up here. Perfect. So there is your basic table. Um, I do want to note also that Primary Act has a load of options um, for these tables and tons of examples. So I'm going to go ahead and leave the documentation to the data table, uh, the data table docs for Primary Act in the description below as well. Now that we have our table set up, let's go ahead and add some sorting functionality. So this is super simple to do. We're going to head back to our Visual Studio Code, and on the column that you want to sort by, uh, we can go ahead and just add the property sortable, just like that and save and I go back and now you can see that obviously it's already sorted by ID but if I click on the ID heading here it's going to sort it um, and it's going to change the order from descend or from ascending to descending and back if I if I uh, click it again so we can go ahead and add sortable to the other col columns as well sortable and one more time oops sortable Lovely. So now these can all be sorted. It can all be sorted by um, any field now. Okay. Now that we have added sorted functionality, we're going to go ahead and add 
multiple sort functionality in which you can sort by multiple fields at a time. So go ahead and go back to Visual Studio Code and go into the data table component here and add a new property called sort mode. And you're going to go ahead and set that equal to multiple. Save. Go back to the table. You can hold down command while clicking on the heading, the headers of uh, different fields. And you can see the order in which it's sorted. So it's first sorted by ID, and then it's going to be sorted by name after that, and then age. Um, and you can do that in the opposite. So you can go age, name, and then ID, just as so. All right, so now that we've completed the sorting functionality, I'm going to go ahead and set up some filtering functionality for you. So the first thing that you're going to have to do is go back to Visual Studio Code, and you're going to have to import these three different uh, components. So use, or you have to import use state, which is a hook from React, uh, filter match mode, which is an object um, containing some constant definitions, and then input text from prime React slash input text. Um, and you don't necessarily have to use input text here. This is a component that I'm using for a search bar. Next, you're going to go ahead and set up the global filters, or your filters. So you're going to go ahead and set uh, a new state called filter and set filter. Actually, let's do filters and set filters. And then it's going to be an object. And you're going to set global for a global filter. You're going to set global equal to an object with value of null to start, unless you want to start with a filtered value. And match mode is going to be filter match dot contains. And there's a lot of options for de filtering specific um, specific columns and also different filter modes. Uh, so contains, not contains, all sorts of different stuff. That, however, goes beyond the scope of this video. Now that we have the filters state set up, let's go ahead and put it into the, a property called filters on the data table. Set that equal to filters, perfect. And then we're going to go ahead and set up a search bar uh, so that the see so that the user can put in some search. So create a new component, a new input text component, and or whatever text input you're going to use. And then I'm going to use the on input event. In which case I'm going to go ahead and let uh, autopilot do some work here. So it's going to set filters to um, filters and the the rest of the filters object, which is nothing in this case. I'm actually going to get rid of that and. So you're gonna set it, so it's gonna set the filters to global, um, and then the value is going to be the target of the input, and is going to keep the same match mode of contains. So I'm going to save that, go back. And now I have this input box here, and I can search, say, John, or Mary, or Jane, and it properly filters the data. Okay, now that we've added filtering and sorting functionality, the last piece is going to be um, pagination. So head back to Visual Studio Code and start adding new properties to the data table. The first one you're going to add is just paginator, as so. And the next one is going to be the starting row um, of the table when it loads. So in this case, it's gonna, I'm going to set it to 1. And then the rows per page options, if you want to allow them to change the rows per page, I'm going to set it to 1, 2, and 3, because we only have three records. And then the last piece that you're going to need is total records. And I'm going to set this to 3. Um, perfect. And that, if I save that and go back to the table, we should have a paginator right here. 1, 2, 3. And we can set two records per, per um, page. And it changes the paginator accordingly, updates it. Um, the paginators are fantastic. You can set your own layouts, uh, your own templates. There's so much to do with them. So we'll go ahead and play around with that in Prime React. Um, and their documentation on it is also fantastic. I hope this video helped. And please like and subscribe for more.